I'm currently in Copenhagen and I was originally coming here um, for my boyfriend's graduation but he wasn't able to come so then I've just been seeing my friends it's a very unique moment in time for me that I don't think will ever be replicated in exactly the same way so I kind of just want to do a video as a time capsule and be a little bit less perfectionistic about my YouTube I think this week has been like extremely disorienting for many reasons um, I think on a personal level, I'm definitely feeling just grief in like the huge change of um, of being like on an entirely new continent and feeling like I have to kind of like start to build a life here. Even though I hated New York City, I have known it since I was like very little and like everywhere that I was going every single day, they were places that I have seen over and over again. Even if I felt physically uncomfortable, I think like my my brain felt a sense of, um, of familiarity. And I think the biggest thing about going abroad is just like, I don't know everything. Like even in Copenhagen, I did study abroad here for a few months, um, but coming back here, I kind of remember all of the ways that it felt strange to me back then. Like even the little things like the grocery store is not carrying the same things just all these changes is like very overwhelming like on a sensory level is very overwhelming so i just kind of felt like a large upheaval when i arrived i think on a cultural level um i felt like there were a lot of things in america that didn't feel like fully supportive i just wanted to be in a society where work-life balance was just much more ingrained and um, especially being autistic, the American lifestyle really doesn't really suit me. Working so many hours and just um, the burnout culture, the hustle culture, the martyrdom culture as well, it's just quite intense for me and the, the, just like the overstimulation I think I feel like overstimulation like the biggest thing I noticed when I was living in Italy just the pace of life is so different and for someone with sensory needs like having a slower pace of life where there's less um, stimulation there's less overconsumption um, there's less pressure to brand yourself especially Berlin which is the place that I hope to move to next year. I just kind of felt that less masking was required. I think when I went to Berlin, it kind of felt like if my college was like a city, it's like a very queer city, I think. And that's, you know, you can wear whatever you want and nobody cares, nobody judges you. Um, people are more like artistic and more like anarchist. It just feels like something that's more aligned with like my personal values. It makes it feel like a little bit easier living a life that is more about um, art and connection and community and not so much about consumption, working and capitalism. I think that Europe just like resonated with me on a lot of levels in terms of like the lifestyle that I wanted to build. So I'm here now and I'm starting the journey of like, you know, being here, I think like making your way in a new place completely is a long process. I think even if I was in the United States and I decided because New York wasn't for me, like I decided to move to Vermont or something, which was one of my ideas to move to like Vermont or to move to a really nature-y um, city that was like more kind of like queer and hippie vibes, like that would have been what I would have done if I stayed in the US. Um, even that would have been like a hard adjustment. I try to remember that, that like, I think a lot of what I'm feeling is not so much I just moved across continents, but it's just feeling like, oh, I actually like left the nest. Like I, I left my childhood home, I left my childhood town, I left like my childhood city where my parents were workers. Even though I hated New York City, I have known it since I was like very little and like, Everywhere that I was going every single day, they were places that I have seen over and over again. I think it felt really comfortable because it felt very familiar. 
But I think the purpose of this video is like I just need to get everything out. Anytime I'm going through a period where I feel like particularly lost, what normally is happening in that period is that I'm just like refusing to engage with storytelling and what always marks the emergence from that period of lostness or confusion is some kind of narrative that I pull together about my experience. I think crafting meaning definitely is very therapeutic uh, for me. I guess I also storytell for others because um, there were moments in time where I didn't have the language for my own experience, but I would go on YouTube or I would um, go on Instagram and I'd see someone else that has language for what my experience is and then suddenly I can also have that narrative. We share narratives and we exchange narratives and we can find ourselves in other people's narratives in a way that helps us um, feel more empowered. So I guess that's what I hope to do with this YouTube channel overall. There's like definitely a part of me that is, um, is holding back, I think for YouTube um, because of this, you know, kind of like this specter of careerism, you know, and what is like professional. I personally really find my home in the shadow elements of society, like the things that are um, taboo, the things that are people don't want to talk about. Those are kind of the areas where I gravitate towards. I'm just struggling to navigate that whole question of privacy because it also, you know, when you say that something's a secret, it's, why is it a secret? Because it's, um, it's shameful or, or others see it as shameful. If the people on YouTube, Fatomi being a major example, I think for me, um, if they were ashamed of like their extreme depression, um, their suicide attempts, like all the really, you really intense things that have happened to them. You know, how many, how many people would have lost out on a sense of solace and comfort? People that were going through these intense things that felt alone because they're stigmatized topics that, you know, nobody wants to talk about. I, I'm trying to get like the master, there's like a master word that's like, it just like encompasses everything. White cis heteropatriarchy, but then I'm also missing ableism in that. So yeah, white cis ableist heteropatriarchy. I think I got everything. Yeah, is really <laughs> invested in, you know, keeping marginalized stories um, hidden. Any kind of story that ch ch challenges it, that challenges like the dominant narratives of the society, um, they want it to be hidden because, you know, if we if we all are more honest um, and more truthful, and if people that are marginalized in many ways actually are able to stand up and tell their stories and and not be silenced and reclaim our right to tell our stories. Um, then that poses a major threat to the, um, the hegemonic narrative that exists. Um, I think one, yeah, one major thing that you know I really want to bring onto this YouTube, and I'm gonna have to if I want to really step into my purpose, is just really my, you know, is a lot of like my ancestral knowledge and and my spiritual gifts, um, and. Yeah, the knowledge systems I engage with that are outside of Western science and are outside of imperialist forms of knowledge making. Um, I think that's a quite that's a scary one to talk about. That's a scary one to talk about, especially as someone that is neurodivergent. But I guess it kind of comes down to then: Do you have the courage to kind of, um, I guess, put yourself not put yourself in the line in certain ways, but. But in a sense, like, as storytellers, like, um, when me, as someone who's neurodivergent and who is a practitioner of non-Western knowledge systems, it, when I put those stories out there, when I claim that identity, when I refuse to kind of hide, and when I start to puncture and brush up and challenge hegemonic narratives, um, you know, there's... I guess there's kind of like, a, am I brave enough to do that? Am I brave enough to 
fully embody my truth in the light of day. Just adding into this video, hopping on a day later, um, that I just launched zozosworld.com, which is my website for my healing services. So if you're interested in a healing session, check that out. The link is down below. All the testimonials so far have been really, really great. And I just enjoy healing, giving healing services so much. So if you're interested, everything is um, on a sliding scale from $20 to $40 since I'm just beginning and trying to just gain more experience. It's on the lower end, normally healing services go for like upwards of $100. So yeah, and I'm pretty good at it. So if you're interested in that, click the link down below.